The way winemaking is conducted depends on the grape variety and wine style being produced. Different fermentation vessel designs are used in order to achieve the desired wine style and to cater for large tonnages being fermented, which can be many thousands in a commercial winery during vintage. This is the time of year when grapes are ready for winemaking. Red and white wines differ greatly with respect to handling and processing of grapes after harvest and the way fermentation is carried out. As an example, the juice from white grapes is typically removed by pressing from the solids, skins and seeds, immediately, whereas the must, the juice and solids, from red grapes is macerated and fermented together. This video will focus on making white wine, while red wine will be presented in the following video. White wine grapes are harvested when the sugar, acid and flavour levels are determined to be suitable for the wine style being produced. The fruit is usually picked at cool ambient temperature, around 20, 10 to 20 degrees centigrade, often during the night by machine, or is otherwise chilled upon arrival at the winery, especially in warmer regions with Mediterranean climates, such as those found in Australia, North and South America, and parts of Europe. Sulphur dioxide, SO2, may be added to the picking bins at the time of mechanical harvesting to provide some protection against oxidation and browning, and to minimise microbial growth. Vineyards are full of different microbes, including yeast, which conduct fermentation. At the winery, grapes are inspected and sampled to determine the basic chemical parameters such as total soluble solids, an indication of the sugar content, pH and acidity, so appropriate additions can be made prior to fermentation. These variables will differ based on the grape variety, growing region and level of ripeness. Grapes are selected by the winemaker according to quality and style considerations before being de-stemmed and crushed prior to pressing to obtain the juice for fermentation. This produces free run juice, no pressure is applied, and pressings which tend to be a bit harsher due to phenolic compounds and they are of lower quality. Pressings are usually fermented separately but can be blended back in in some proportion later in the process. Adjustments of tartaric acid or sugar concentration can be performed at this stage depending on local regulations and sulphur dioxide may be added prior to pressing. Sulphur dioxide, usually added in its bisulfite form, is used at various stages of the winemaking process to protect wine from oxidation and microbial spoilage. In some cases, such as in the production of Champagne, Chardonnay or Riesling, bunches are pressed without crushing or destemming to minimise the extraction of phenolic compounds, providing higher quality juice. In some cases, maceration of juice and solids can be undertaken, like what would occur for red wine. The aim is to improve the concentration of flavour compounds or aroma precursors in the juice and wine, but under controlled conditions to minimise extraction or oxidation of phenolics. After pressing, white juice is typically cold settled to remove suspended matter and decanted, known as racking, to another vessel to provide clarification of the juice prior to inoculation with yeast. Further clarification by filtration or centrifugation of the settled juice may also happen to further eliminate suspended solids or to speed up the settling process. The level of clarification, determined by measuring turbidity, is dependent upon the wine style being produced and can be adjusted by altering the settling time or adding back some sediment. This sediment is known as lees. Some suspended solids are necessary to provide nutrients to yeast for optimum fermentation conditions and wine sensory properties but high levels of turbidity can lead to off flavours. Pectin splitting enzymes are often used before or after pressing to assist in juice extraction and clarification processes. The juice is inoculated with selected yeast, many different strains are available, and that is usually pre-cultured by the winery or added as active dry yeast, just like bread making. Although wild, uninoculated, fermentations with native yeast from the vineyard or winery environment are also performed for certain wine styles, like Sauvignon Blanc or Chardonnay. Fermentation occurs in stainless steel tanks or oak barrels in some instances, again depending on the style the winemaker aims to produce. Yeast nutrients, a usable form of nitrogen, may be added if the grapes are deficient and a steady fermentation rate is preferred. This can be maintained by manipulating the temperature of the ferment, if necessary, around or below 20 degrees centigrade is usually ideal. Aeration during the first few days of fermentation can ensure a healthy yeast population and favourable fermentation conditions, that is, efficient conversion of sugar and non-stressed yeasts.
Temperature and specific gravity are monitored daily, along with other parameters, to track the progress of fermentation. Once a ferment has reached the desired residual sugar, this is usually taken as 2 grams per litre for a dry wine, the wine is cooled and allowed to settle, then racked off gross lees, the leftover grape solids and yeast remnants, under an atmosphere of inert gas such as nitrogen or carbon dioxide, to prevent oxygen from spoiling the wine. For reasons stated before, SO2 is added prior to racking as well. The exact operation at this point depends upon the type of wine being produced. The wine may be matured in oak barrels or undergo lees ageing for several months. This is fine lees which is mostly expired yeast cells, with some form of occasional agitation of the lees. This can be used to enhance the flavour and mouthfeel properties of the wine. Spontaneous or inoculated malolactic fermentation, MLF for short, conducted by lactic acid bacteria, like those in milk, can also occur and this deacidifies the wine by metabolising malic acid into lactic acid. MLF can also play a role in wine mouthfeel, not a taste but the sensation of wine in the mouth, and formation of aerobic compounds, buttery characteristics, among other effects. Wine is blended and undergoes what is known as fining, where phenolic compounds or other components are moderated to give the desired sensory profile. Wine is then stabilised against precipitation of natural grape proteins, which cause cloudiness, and of tartrates, which can lead to crystal formation. Wine is then stabilised against precipitation of natural grape proteins, which cause cloudiness, and of tartrates, which can lead to crystal formation. Wines are then analysed for pH, free sulphur dioxide, and heat and cold, that is protein and tartrate stability. Any adjustments are made and the wine is clarified and stored in readiness for sterile filtration prior to bottling. Sweet white wines, such as Sauternes and Tokay, which are usually served with dessert, arise due to grape desiccation from infection by noble rot, a fungus called Botrytis, or from deliberately overripened grapes. These wines rely on high sugar grape levels. These juices are not fermented to dryness, so residual sugar, around 10 to 30 grams per litre, but up to 200 grams per litre, remains in the wine, affording various levels of sweetness. Alternatively, Concentrated grape juice can be used to sweeten a wine that has fermented to dryness, either before or after stabilisation, and just prior to bottling. This gives greater control over the final sweetness of the wine, but generally produces inferior wines compared to fermenting a high sugar juice to obtain the residual sweetness. Other means of concentrating the grape sugars prior to fermentation are also used, such as drying or freezing the grapes to yield wines with high residual sugar. Wines containing residual sugar, a food source for microbes, require special attention to ensure they do not re-ferment at some later stage. Sweet white wines are made in a similar way to dry white wine, but can display additional complexity and concentration of aromas and flavours. Apart from changes to parameters such as sweetness and acidity, botrytized wines, those made from grapes affected by noble rot, in particular possess enhanced aroma characteristics, which add to their appeal. These types of wines may also undergo a period of maturation in oak barrels, which adds its own complexity. As the name suggests, sparkling wines are those which contain dissolved carbon dioxide as a result of secondary fermentation in bottle or tank, or from carbonation by an external source, much like a soft drink or soda. The use of the name Champagne, the original term applied to sparkling wines arising from the region of France with the same name, is now restricted to wines produced in that appellation, as is the use of Méthode Champenoise to describe the winemaking process. Sparkling wines can be white, red or rosé, and the base wine preparation is essentially the same as that used for the respective dry table wine styles. This production method uses grapes specifically picked for that purpose, so they are generally less ripe than grapes used for table wines, and have higher acidity and lower levels of sugar. Classic Champagne varieties are Chardonnay, Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier. Whole bunch pressing, mentioned earlier, is often used for high quality sparkling wines to minimise extraction of phenolics and colour. Base wines are carefully prepared much like dry table wines, and stabilised, fined and blended. Base wines from different vintages can be used to maintain a consistent style, non-vintage sparkling wine, or in exceptional years the blend may come from a single vintage, vintage sparkling wine. This will have a date on the label. Base wines are liqueured, sugar is added to produce the carbon dioxide at a certain pressure, 
and they're inoculated with yeast for secondary fermentation, thus producing the bubbles. Lee's ageing is an important component of sparkling wine production, affecting foam quality, aroma and mouthfeel, and may occur for many years. At the time of bottling, wines are dosed with a solution containing additives such as sugar, sulphur dioxide, brandy and acid to give the final sweetness and sensory balance for that wine style. 